Welcome back to TalkNorth.com. Thank you for listening. If you can, please download before you listen. It helps our business. I'd also like to thank our producer, Brandon Morton, and let you know if you'd like to sponsor this program or any of the programs on the network. You can reach me at jsouhan47 at gmail.com. TalkNorth.com is powered by Bite Squad. Go to BiteSquad.com or download their app. Get food to your door in minutes. Use the promo code TalkNorth to get your first delivery free. Talk North gets you your first delivery free. Everyone take a deep breath. The Vikings may have saved their season Sunday. The defense may have gotten its swagger back as well. Just like that, you're 2-2-1 two, two, and one, and right back in this. It's so funny that Adam Thielen needs to break a record for some attention from ESPN. Then they go on to give us his life story like Minnesotans didn't know that already. We've been on top of Adam for a long time now at ESPN, and it's an honor to have him as a Minnesota boy. I'm sorry, the Wild look like an elderly team at this point. Not a lot of youth, not a lot of speed, and it's looking like not a lot of wins. You're listening to the Strom Sports Show. And it's good to have you with us today on the TalkNorth.com podcast network. You're listening to the Strom Sports Show. I'm Steven Strom. Brandon Morton is the producer. Jim Suhan is a guy to contact if you want to advertise with the show. Everyone can take a deep breath. This season, this Minnesota Vikings year, is not over yet. A huge win against Philadelphia Eagles. Going into Philly, not an easy place to go to. They struggled the last few times. Their obviously NFC Championship game was a disaster. And the year before that, or maybe the year, or two years before that, when they were 5-0, and 4-0, um, they lost that game, and that kind of went into a spiral as they finished 8-8 eight and eight that year. Well, I mean, it was an absolute complete game from everyone, from the defense to the quarterback to the wide receivers. Everybody, Mike Zimmer called a great game. I thought John Filippo, that was his best game called. we got a lot to stuff to here today as I have Darren Urban of the Arizona Cardinals he covers the team. He's covered the team for the last 19 years. He's going to come on and a little little preview for today and give you some some insight on what to look for in today's game against the Cardinals. Ten and a half point favorites. We remember the last time the Vikes were favored by double digits at home. Um, not a very good game. Obviously, I thought as the week went on, I almost thought to myself, maybe... It was good that it happened this early, so a game like today, they you know, doesn't happen. You know, when you have that much of a hiccup in the Buffalo game, that teaches you, okay, we're not going to do the same thing against a below-average team, and I think that's what the uh, Arizona Cardinals are at this point. They just got their first win in San Francisco, so we'll chat with Darren in a few minutes here. And then I've got Matthew Collar, my guy of ESPN 1500. He covers the Vikes. You know him. He's been on here a couple of times. He'll give us the update on Reef, on uh, on Dalvin Cook, what's going on with the team, uh, what's going on in the locker room, the vibes around the team. Uh, so we'll definitely get into that a little bit later. To help preview today's Viking Cardinal game, Darren Urban, who covers and writes for the Arizona Cardinals. He's done it for the last 19 years. He joins me today on the Strom Sports Show. Darren, thank you very much for giving me the time. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. All right, so let's get into it here. The Cardinals got their first W of the year last week. Um, They were able to turn over C.J. Beathard. Josh Rosen threw a deep ball to Christian Kirk early, but nothing really else after that. Uh, What have you seen from Josh Rosen early on? Give me some things you like and give me some things that uh, he needs to work on in your eyes. Well, I I think uh, on the part that you like, I mean, he, he clearly is a smart kid. He, he obviously understands the offense already. Um, I think for the most part, and we didn't see it as much last week, uh, but I do think he has an accurate arm. I do think he has a, an arm that's a little bit stronger than maybe even I thought it was originally. And I think all those things help. And, and I think he has a confidence about him, mm-hmm. um, that which you have to have a certain confidence if you're going to be a quarterback anyways. But uh, sometimes that isn't always there with a rookie quarterback, and I, and I think that's there. Now, in terms of what he needs to work on, well, there's going to be ups and downs. We saw last week he had a, he had a very solid, if not excellent, uh, initial start. And then last week he had some guys that were open and he just airmailed too many throws. Mm. And I don't know if that was because of uh, 
you know, uh, the, the hype of, of being in his first road game or, or what it was, but uh, he wasn't quite the same player, and it, and it affected them on the field, clearly. So, I mean, he's going to have to learn some of those things. I, I think he as he goes on and uh, opposing defenses start getting uh, video on him and understanding what he likes to do and what he does best, um, they're going to start, you know, making sure that those things don't happen, and he's going to have to adjust to that. And I think that's where some of the ups and downs are going to come. But uh, I, I think with these early returns uh, and obviously a small sample size, uh, he looks good so far. It's funny, when, when Josh Rosen was coming out, um, a lot of people s- almost took the confidence as a negative thing, like he was too cocky or you know, he does, he's, he thinks he's this, he thinks he's that. And I think it's very big for, for a rookie quarterback to have that confidence, and you see it in him. You see it in some of the throws yeah. that he makes and, and some of the plays that he makes. But it's just funny how you know the media can can really kind of turn that confidence thing that he really has into a almost like a I'm too good for this kind of thing because that was kind of his rep uh, coming out of the draft that he was too smart for everyone. Um, so well, I, I, yeah, and I, I would say that you know he he's admitted that even when he first got to UCLA, there might have been a little bit of growing up he needed to do, and he he understands that. But uh, and and I can I understand in certain ways with some of his, maybe his facial expressions, if you don't really know him. Mm-hmm. Um, I could see how that would bother some people sometimes. But I think ultimately, uh, you know, I think it is a plus. I, I think he's not, uh, him being smart is going to help him on this level. It's going to help him understand offenses. It's going to help him understand his teammates. I think he's going to hold himself to a high standard. I think he's going to hold his teammates to a high standard. He, he knows he's got a long way to go and he's not a finished product. Uh, but I do believe that he wants to be very good as an NFL football player, and I do believe he wants to be a winner. And uh, those were also some knocks of like whether he was going to be super committed. And everything I've seen over the last few months since he showed up here says that he absolutely is all in on all this. Yes, I agree 100%. Now let's move to David Johnson. He ran for 55 yards and two touchdowns on 18 carries on Sunday against the Niners. How important is it? to get David Johnson going for the Cardinals early in this game where you know that crowd's going to be going crazy? Well, I mean, it's a super important every game that David Johnson get going. And unfortunately for the Cardinals, we were five games in, and he, he really hasn't had any kind of breakout game. And yep. they're still trying to figure out how that's how that's going to happen. And, and that's been uh, you know one of the biggest storylines around this team at this point, is why isn't David Johnson a little bit more involved? Why can't you get him loose a little bit more? And there are lots of reasons for that. But uh, but clearly going into this game and you're playing at Minnesota, which you know, you're know you in a position where these guys uh, tend to – it's a snowball effect when you're in a place uh, like Minnesota in a dome with that fan base, whereas if you don't get off to a decent start, it can really – get ugly fast if you're not careful I would think especially with a rookie quarterback so uh, I don't think there's any bigger thing for the Cardinals in this game than getting David Johnson untracked early. Now let's switch gears here to the defense of the Cardinals they struggled a little last week getting off the field they were kind of burned on a couple long drives but they really stuck to that theme of bending and not breaking they created some turnovers what are things that must change defensively for the Cardinals when they face the hot hand of Kirk Cousins and the Vikes? Well, the one thing that they kind of have going in their favor, and I, I would, you know, I, I don't want to overstate it, but the the fact that Minnesota struggled a little bit to run the ball is helpful because that's really been the Achilles heel of the Cardinals so far is their run defense and and not being able to stop teams from running even when they might not be the best running team. So. Uh, I think that's important. Now, the, the Vikings' offense overall with Kirk Cousins and all the different guys that can catch the ball, I mean, that that's something that they really – I mean, they did play the Rams, and, and we all saw how that went. So, I mean, it, it's something that they're going to have to contend with. But I, this defense first has to be able to make sure they stop the run. And, you know, I'm not sure exactly how the, the Vikings are going to do uh, in terms of, of running the ball this weekend – uh, and 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 how it's all going to play out, but um, th- that's got to be the main focus for the Cardinals. And then after that, you worry about getting some pressure on Kirk Cousins, uh, because as all the analytics have shown, if you can get some pressure on Kirk Cousins, that's usually when he struggles a little bit more. Because if you don't get pressure on him, he'll just carve you up. 
Now, I want to talk a little about this player. A couple more questions left here. Uh, Chandler Jones just won the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. Had an unbelievable game last week. Now, the Vikings offensive line, that is the weak link of this team. What do you think Al Holcomb is going to do in, you know, with Chandler Jones and this defense to try to get some pressure up front? The, the Cardinals don't do a whole lot of super special things. I mean, they, they, they try not to blitz a ton. Uh, they have played mostly nickel all season, which will help against the Vikings, and, and it's going to be necessary given all the receivers the Vikings have. Um, Buda Baker basically serves as the third linebacker as well as the third safety. I mean, that's, they, they basically play that almost the entire game, and they just have two linebackers out there, which is, for all we know, that might be part of the reason it, it, the run defense struggles a little bit, but it does help them against the pass. And so, you know, I'm, I, you know, I can't, I haven't seen a ton of Vikings games yet, so I can't really speak for sure on that offensive line, but clearly, uh, Chandler Jones is coming off that great game. He's a guy that can really put a lot of pressure, and they put a lot of pressure overall on the 49ers last week. And the 49ers did have the backup uh, quarterback in C.J. Beathard, but they had their starting offensive line in, and it's not a bad offensive line, and yet the Cardinals were able to make a lot of hay, and I'm sure that that's what they're hoping for this week and uh, to force more turnovers. I mean, the one thing Josh Rosen is doing really well right now is not turning the ball yep. over. He has not not turn the ball over in two games as a starter. And the, and the Cardinals obviously got five turnovers last week against the 49ers. That's, that's really, at this point, their path to victory. And that's some of the growth that you like to see from Rosen. You, you know, a lot of rookie quarterbacks, you look around the league, Sam Darnold, he's throwing some picks. Baker Mayfield's throwing some picks. Josh Rosen doing a really good job with ball security. you got to like that in that sense. Now, a big matchup I'm looking at here is obviously the Patrick Peterson, one of the best corners in the league, is going to go up against either Adam Thielen or Stephon Diggs. I imagine he'll be shadowing one of the two every play. What do you think the strategy here? Who do you think he's going to end up on for most of the game? If you had to guess, I mean, I it would it would probably depend on exactly how the Vikings like to deploy those guys all the time. And I mean, if Thielen's running out of the slot and you got Diggs on the edge uh, outside, I would think it would probably be Diggs, and then maybe have some Buda Baker on Thielen. But I'm I'm not really sure how that's going to go. Uh, they have moved Patrick around a little bit more, uh, and. And if they don't, if they feel like there's, you know, an equal amount of issues you're going to have facing both those receivers, which is a fair, a fair place to come to when you see how well both of those guys have played, you know, they might just maybe do a little bit more zone or, or trying to do it that way. I mm. mean, they'll 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 mix and mash a lot more, even though it's Patrick Peterson because uh, of this defense and how Al Holcomb likes to run things. Now, what? Let's talk about Steve Wilkes real quick. What is? What have you liked from Steve his first year into this? Well, um, I think he's really done a nice job in terms of getting these players to understand where he's coming from. They've had a little bit of issues in terms of you know learning the defense at this point or learning the offense. And that's a work in progress, but. In the end, I think as a man, they believe in him, and I think he treats all his players in a really, in, in such a way where he can coach them hard, but they believe that he has their best interests at heart. Mm. And I think that's been important for him uh, as he come has come in as a new coach. And I, and I do think they've responded to him in terms of that part of the coaching. Now, you know, the on-field stuff, the X's and O's. I think that's obviously still a work in progress, and. You know, wins and losses are what everybody is measured by, but I, I do think the players buy into Steve Wilkes as a head coach. Last one here before I let you go. Any particular matchups you're you're personally looking at in, uh, on Sunday? Well, I know we kind of already talked about it, but ultimately it, it's going to be up front. You know, if the Cardinals can get some pressure on Kirk Cousins, that'll go a long way in, in letting their defense play uh in such a way that they're going to hopefully be in this game. And then on the other side of the ball, uh, you know, you, you've got to be able to hold up and, and let Josh Rosen have some time to throw it. I don't know with this Vikings defense, if this is the week you're going to be able to get David Johnson loose running the ball. Mm -hmm. and, and in which case you're going to have to get some production out of Josh Rosen beyond, you know, one bomb at the beginning of the game. He's going to have to be more consistent. They're going to have to be able to throw the ball a little bit. 
Uh, and you know, if if you can do that, you know, maybe you're you're in a in a better better shape. But we'll see how this plays out. Darren Nurbin, everybody, you can follow him on Twitter at Cards Chatter. Does a really good job with the Arizona Cardinals.